Chapter 18 1 As much as Gar had tried not to think about it, he found himself repeating the situation with Minnow and Oscar over and over again in his head. Even though Minnow had said the lie was fine, they were even grateful for it, he still felt disappointed that he hadn't found a better way out of that situation. He had a few spells where he would zone out thinking about it, but mostly he hoped that Minnow wouldn't bring it up again as a joke or anything. As the week went on, he was glad Minnow never mentioned it. He was also glad they didn't seem to change in their demeanor much, except they kept occasionally giving him that weird look. He tried to shake off the feeling of worry it gave him. He had also been distracted by making plans with Minnow and Tilly for the weekend. Minnow consistently insisted that Gar bring his guitar wherever they go, and it took what seemed like forever to decide on a place to meet. They eventually settled on going to the park, which seemed like an obvious answer anyway. The weather was supposed to be nice the day they had planned to go, and it wasn't somewhere that got exactly crowded, even on weekends. He was now standing in the field in the park, looking over the grass and flowers. The park was mostly empty, which was nice. He had gotten here early so he could see what it was like and adjust to any noise if it was particularly loud. He preferred being the one to greet others when they would meet up anyway, though he wasn't sure why that was. Hey Gar, looks like someone's early. Minnow's voice drug him out of his thoughts. Gar turned to face Minnow, who was walking down the sidewalk towards him. They had a smile on their face and their hands to their pockets of their hoodie. They seemed happier than they normally were. Are you referring to me or you? He knew the answer. You, obviously. I'm not that early. Looks like you've been here for a while, though. Why? They came to a stop beside him. I don't really know. Guess it assures I'm not late. He shrugged. Fair enough. Oh, by the way, did you see what I sent in the group chat? Minnow asked quickly. No. What? Look. He sighed for a moment and pulled out his phone, looking at his messages for whatever it was Minnow sent. It was an odd image of a sea bunny with text that was largely clear up until the last two words, which were laying over unintelligible text. He stared at it for a minute before he concluded that he wasn't going to understand the image. He looked over at Minnow. Minnow, I have no idea what that is. He shook his head. It's a sea bunny. Minnow smiled. I see that. It's just the text. It's just supposed to be funny. So, I want seahorse tranquilizer is funny? Well, because it lacks context, I do not get it. Minnow, what the shell is this image? Tilly's voice rang out. It's funny, right? Minnow shouted at her as they turned to look at Tilly. Gar turned and watched Tilly jog over, finding her phone in her bag and shaking her head. She seemed confused, but entertained. She started slowing to a stop as she got closer to them. It's a little funny, but what does it mean? She stared at Minnow. I want seahorse tranquilizer. Minnow stated. That doesn't make it any clearer. It's not supposed to mean anything in particular. They grinned. So there's no real explanation or meaning. Nope. Huh. Gar watched Tilly stare for a moment at the ground and then lifted her gaze back up. She clapped her hands and tilted her head to the side. Anyway, hi, how are we all doing? Fine, Gar said plainly. Great. Finally got through the most painful week of my life. Ninio? Minnow looked over at her. I'm fine, but... What? Most painful week of your life? Tilly stared at them with wide eyes. Okay, so... Minnow started. Not again. Gar hung his head. You know those mini oven things they give to kids to let them bake things like cookies or brownies or whatever? Minnow asked. Yeah, I do. She nodded. So I took one of those things, and I decided I'd cook all my meals in it for a week. It sounded cool at first, you know? But it's actually horrible. <sighs> Minnow sighed. I underestimated how hard it was to cook a full meal without a stovetop, to be honest. Why would you do that to yourself? Tilly sounded deeply confused. I have nothing better to do with my time than make up stupid challenges for myself to occupy my time and make myself annoyed with my own ideas. They shrugged. Honestly, it's my own fault, but after I started, I wanted to finish it. So I went all the way through the week using it. Pretty terrible decision on my part. Sounds like it. Gar, did you know about this? Tilly looked at him. Yes, I have been made well aware of it for the past week, he sighed. Hey, my stories were great compared to what Atoll's been saying lately. Minnow folded their arms. I actually agree with you. Gar paused and then nodded his head in agreement. What has Atoll been saying? Till he looked back and forth between the two of them. Minnow immediately turned their head to look at Gar, and he locked eyes with them for a moment. Minnow was mirroring Gar's blank expression. Both of them were silent for clearly too long as Tilly repeated her question, but slower. I don't know how to even begin to describe it. Just interesting things, I guess. 
Let me not clear their throat. Anyway, Tilly, tell us something. Tell you what exactly? Tilly blinked. Something, anything, literally whatever comes to your mind, just change the topic. Mino urged her. Okay, uh, well, she was clearly deep in thought. So that new first-person shooter came out, and I forgot the name at the moment, but I... You play video games? Minnow's jaw was slightly agape. Yes? It's not that shocking, I think. Right? She looked at Gar. I don't know why you're looking at me. He turned his head away. And, wait, not only do you play video games, but you also play violent video games. You didn't get into, like, Star Mist Canyon or something? Minnow sounded slightly in shock. I play that too. I play all sorts of games. I like ones that are story-based particularly. She shrugged. Inspire some of my art. Minnow ran up to her and put their hands on her shoulders. You make fan art? Sometimes. She smiled. If I like the game enough, absolutely. Gar, this is fucking insane. Minnow looked over their shoulder at him. I'm not really surprised. He shrugged. You knew? Minnow got slightly louder. Sort of. I don't know why you didn't. It's not like I tried to hide it or anything. I could have sworn I told you before, too. Tilly blinked. Curse you, short attention span and shitty memory. Minnow turned away from Tilly and dramatically kicked up some of the dirt from the ground. Garcia at the two, unsure what to say. He was glad Minnow seemed to have another thing in common with Tilly, though. He decided it might be best to just listen. It was one of the things he was good at, at least. Maybe he would find a place to talk. Have you played that one game where you play as the plankton and you have to explore the fallen undersea kingdom or something and there's all those mutated beasts? Minnow was saying. Yes! I finished playing all the way through. It was so good. I love the story. Tilly clasped her hand together. It's my latest hyperfixation, and I'm not going to shut up about it for a month. Minimum. Minnow was practically trembling. I remember you mentioning it. Gar closed his eye. Yeah! I think I've told you the entire story sometime this week. Minnow looked at him. Twice. He nodded. I've ordered at least two of the official plushy things from it. They're going in my collection. They sound almost proud. I thought about getting some for myself. They're adorable. Tilly sighed. The design's my favorite, and the soundtrack. Minnow paused and looked at Gar, seeming to only now notice the guitar he had with him. Speaking of music... Gar looked at him without saying anything. You want to play something? Minnow blinked. Are you indirectly asking me to? Gar sent the question back at them. Kind of. Then ask me. Can you play something? There you go. Gar shifted so he could hold the guitar properly, and he watched Minnow immediately drop it on the ground in front of him, with Tilly doing the same. He stopped for a moment, staring at them both, confused. What? Tilly turned her head to the side. You really don't need to sit down. It's comfortable. The ground is like 90% moss. Minnow waved their hand. You should sit too, honestly. Isn't it easier to play that way? It's simple either way, Gar said plainly. Sit down. Tilly smiled and gestured for him to sit. He sighed and did as she told him to, shifting a bit so he could hold the guitar comfortably. He placed his fingers on the strings as if to play the F's chord, then stop. He didn't know what to play. He looked up at both of them. What do you want to hear exactly? He slowly lifted his head. Anything. Tilly sounded cheerful. I'd prefer if you were specific. What do you know how to play? Minnow asked, leaning forward. He had to think about that for a moment. Most songs that use acoustic, and any song by the Squid Sisters. A couple by Off the Hook. That's because of Hope and Whimsy. He shook his head. Those kids made him learn more songs than he thought he would ever learn. You managed to learn Off the Hook songs on acoustic? No, seems seemed surprised. It doesn't sound completely right, just hardly recognizable, I'll be honest. Gar set his other hand against the strings. Is there one that you know to play that sounds right? Till he stared at the guitar. Gar thought for a moment before he started to play Tide Goes Out. The one song that he knew that he could play that was recognizable. He was particularly fond of the song, since it was slower than some of the other songs. While he was playing, he remembered Tilly telling him that it was her favorite song, and that made him focus just a bit more on making sure that he didn't play the wrong chord. He wasn't sure why. He managed to play through the entire song without Minnow interrupting, which he found odd. He only looked up when he hit the last note. He raised his hands away from the strings and looked at Minnow and Tilly, who were staring at him as if he hadn't stopped playing yet. Finally, Minnow said something. Okay, I didn't know you could just choose not to strum where the sound hole is like you did in the last bit, so I'm kind of impressed. Gar didn't say anything, and slowly shook his head. That sounded pretty spot on, to be honest. I think it was lovely. Say, till he paused for a moment, seemed lost in thought. What was that one song you played, uh, played when we were at your apartment? I don't know if you remember. 
He couldn't forget. Instead of answering, he played the opening, then set his hand against the string as a silence them, looking up at Tilly curiously. Yeah, that one. Tilly leaned forward with a clap, then froze and leaned back, her face slightly pink. That seems like a nice song. What's it about? Minnow tilted their head. Girl leaned back and looked at the sky for a moment. I'm curious too. I remember promising something about a soldier? Tilly added, after a moment of silence. Yes, it's about a soldier. He nodded, looking back down. There was a long period of silence while Minnow and Tilly were waiting for him to say something else. Then Minnow coughed. Are you gonna, like, tell us what it's actually about, or just leave it on the note that it's about a soldier? Like, is that it? Minnow squinted. He thought for a moment. Take a guess. Tell me what you think it is. Well, it's kind of upbeat. Something good happening? I don't know. Minnow looked thoughtful. It's about a soldier coming home from war after being separated from his wife and kids. He comes home to his wife crying, and as it turns out, he died in the war. He said plainly, sliding one of his fingers along the tuning pegs. What? Tilly's eyes were wide. There is a reason I didn't tell you what the song was with Whimsy present. She'd never let me play it again. He shook his head with a small laugh. Why do you play it? Like, it's miserable. Minnow said, then seemed to realize what they said and opened their mouth to say something, but Gar stopped them. I used to play it a lot when I was little. I know others, he shrugged. Are they more positive than that one? Tilly gave a half smile. Guard to consider the lyrics for a moment. Of what he knew, most weren't exactly what he would consider positive songs. He then set his hands against the strings and started playing a specific song he remembered. He didn't think about it much, thinking of the lyrics as he played, then finally stopped at the last chorus, looking up. I'm scared to ask what that song was about. Minnow's eyes were locked on the strings. It was something about peace, actually, moving on from things. He grinned slightly. Why don't you sing the lyrics? Tilly asked. I can play guitar, but that doesn't mean I have good vocals. He shifted, letting go of the guitar neck to let it rest against his knee. Tilly stared at him. I'd be willing to bet that you could sing. No. Come on, just a teeny bit? Absolutely not. He took his guitar and moved it from his lap to the ground beside him. Just one little song. I will push you into the grass. Oh, come on, Gar. It would be cool. Minnow interjected. I'll roll you, too. Do it, coward. You won't. Minnow sounded near antagonistic. Gar stood up as Minnow did the same and moved closer to them. It took a stance as if they were going to fight him, and he gently pushed against their shoulders and knocked them over, watching them tumble incredibly dramatically into the grass. He stared at them as they pretended to writhe in pain. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dying. Minnow wailed. You sound like hope. He shook his head with a sigh. Tilly went to stand up and walk beside him. Dramatic. She made a tisk sound. Gar looked at her for a moment and she held his gaze. Then she took one step backward and he rolled his eye. Taking a step toward her, then pushed her gently and watched her fall into the same sitting position on the grass. She sat there for a moment, looked up at him, and then abruptly threw herself backward into the same position as Minnow. Oh, the pain! The agony! She shouted. I know. It's awful. We're dying. Minnow rolled toward her. Gar watched the two roll around on the ground, putting his hands in his pockets. They seemed to be having fun laying there, and Gar couldn't understand it. They stopped pretending to be hurt after a minute or two, and both of them were looking straight at him. He gave them a slight tilt to his head and kept his eye locked on them. You should join us. It's really comfortable, actually. You'd like it. Tilly gestured for him to join them on the ground. No, I think I prefer standing, he said passively. Gar, there is an unbelievable amount of the most comfortable moss I have ever laid on the ground. I would know. I have laid in enough moss to be a moss expert. Trust me. You're just going to pass on this opportunity? Meadow had a slightly mischievous grin. Yes. Please? Tilly he lifted herself up a little. Both of you are covered in leaves and flowers. I'm good. He blinked. I'm going to pull you down here. Meadow propped themselves up on their elbows. It might be funny to watch you try. Gar shrugged. Minnow turned to Tilly, and she met their gaze with a brief nod. He was fairly familiar with this particular look. Minnow lunged at him and grabbed onto one of his arms, and he sighed as they tugged at him in attempts to pull him down, and failed to do so. I don't think you're going to manage, he tried to say, but was abruptly stopped when Tilly grabbed his other arm and pulled him down. He managed to lay on his knees, pulling his arms away from Tilly and Minnow fast enough to catch himself. He stared with a wide eye at the ground for a moment before he realized he'd been holding his breath, and he huffed which made Tilly and Minnow start to laugh. When they kept laughing, he tried very hard to process what just happened, blinking at Tilly. 
She was stronger than he had originally guessed she was. His face felt warm, but he was sure that was from embarrassment. He wasn't used to that feeling. He, also, wasn't used to being physically moved by anyone. Hope and Whimsy were never strong enough to. Most people weren't strong enough. Or they just chose not to pull or tug on him. He realized he was staring at Tilly, who had stopped laughing and was just blankly staring at him, with a slightly pink face. Carter turned his head away from her. Didn't think we could manage, in a rolled her eyes. And yet, here you are. I didn't think you could manage. You didn't. Not by yourself, he squinted. That's not fair. Mila folded her arms and looked up at the sky. Sure it isn't. He sat back on his knees. Well, at least someone managed. Minnow rolled to their side and looked at Tilly. Garbuthy looked at Tilly, who had a small smile on her face. He held her gaze for a moment. I guess that's true. You're losing your strong and immovable image, Gar. Minnow teased. Very funny. He closed his eye. There are so many flowers here. The pollen is going to destroy me later. Tilly interrupted, finally moving to sit up. Then why did you want to lay on the ground? Gar raised an eyebrow. It's comfortable, she shrugged. You know, I haven't really been here since several weeks ago, and these flowers weren't here the last time. Mino lifted himself up. Shocker! Flowers grow! Tilly grinned and held out her hands. No, shut up. That's not... Never mind. Mino shook their head. They're all pretty colorful. They are staring at the ground. Flowers are... Well, that's not true. Never mind. There are a lot of white flowers, I guess. Tilly hummed. You know, your favorite color is pink, right? Mino looked at Tilly. Yeah, uh, why? Tilly asked. Mill looked at Gar and then stood forward, leaning toward him, and he leaned away. No, stop that. Mino's voice was quiet, and they tugged on him to lean in. We gotta find a pink flower for Tilly. Why do we have to? He looked at Mino, then Tilly was entirely unaware of what Mino was saying. No matter how quiet Mino tried to be, the proximity made it easy for her to listen. Because it'd be fun. Stand up! Mino jumped to their feet and started to look around for something. Gar was slightly amused and stood up to follow them. Unfortunately, the park didn't exactly have azaleas, which Gar knew was Tilly's favorite flower. Surely there were pink flowers around them, though. Gar heard Tilly go to stand and looked over his shoulder to see her watching him and Minna search. Her head was tilted to the side and she seemed curious. Gar turned back to focus on what he was doing and then immediately caught sight of a bright pink perennial. He knelt down and went to hold the stem between his fingers. He looked toward Minnow, who was making their way over to him, staring at the flower. Neither of them said a word. He gently picked the flower up, breaking the stem, and stared at it, holding it up to Minnow. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. It spoke to me. Minnow nodded. Spoke to you? Gar raised his eyebrows. You heard me. It spoke to me. Come on. Minnow just referred him to stand back up. He followed them back over to Tilly and handed her the tiny flower. A token of friendship. Certified. Minnow said with a grin putting their hands on their hips. That right. She looked over at Minnow as she took the flower from Gar's hand. He backed up. Then, Minnow, come with me. Tilly tugged Minnow away. Gar knew well what they were doing, but watched as if he had no clue. He watched both of them start to search around for something. He tried to take a moment to reflect. Something about this felt odd to him. It felt peaceful in a way he didn't know how to describe. A part of it held a strange familiarity, but it was something distant, and he couldn't picture it. Found it! Minnow shouted, holding something proudly in the air as they ran back toward Gar, alongside Tilly, who seemed just as excited. Gar watched them run over to him and then stopped directly in front of him, holding out a marigold with a wide smile. Tilly moved her hands as if to present it to him. He stared at it, but didn't reach out to take it. A sign of friendship, or, uh, something. Whatever I said before. Minnow blinked at the flower, raising their hand up a bit more to give Gar and Cinder to take it. I know it's not your favorite, but... Tilly started saying, then stopped when he moved to take it from Minnow, holding it up to look at it. People can have more than one favorite thing. He shrugged, twirling it for a moment in his fingers before he tucked it behind his ear. Till he had an unreadable expression. Minnow seemed thrilled. Now come on, we've got one final mission to accomplish. Gar said, moving past Minnow and pulling Tilly in a different direction. He could have sworn he heard Minnow giggle a bit, and he shot a quick look back at them. What's Minnow's favorite color anyway? Till he asked as they started looking for the last flower. Teal. I think any shade of blue works, though. He scanned the ground. Ah, uh, what about this flower? Tilly pointed at the small cluster of blue flowers, though they were fairly small. No. Gar shook his head, briefly looking at it before he kept searching. This is kind of fun, even if it's silly. Tilly was saying, still looking around. Gar didn't respond, but he did nod, despite knowing she wasn't looking up to see him do that. 
He finally caught sight of a bright blue flower, leaning down and picking it up, twisting it for a moment before he turned back to Tilly. I think this is it. Let me see. She leaned over. He held out the flower. It was fairly large for a wild flower, but he felt like Minnow would like it. Tilly nodded the minute she saw it and gave him a big smile. It's perfect, she grinned. Both of them turned around and made their way back to Minnow quickly. He slowed down as he got closer to them and then turned to look at Tilly briefly before he held the flower out to Minnow. A, uh, whatever you said before. Tilly clapped her hands together. Minnow stared at the flower for a moment before they reached forward and took it. I seriously thought you guys would pull those super small blue flowers and make a comment about how small I am, Minnow was saying, staring at the flower, seemingly concentrating on it. No, no, that'd be mean. Tilly shook her head with a frown. It's actually really cool. Minnow gently lifted one of the petals with her hand. I know you're doing it just because I started the whole thing, but it means a lot to me, you know. It's a token of friendship, like you said. Gar watched them. Yeah. Minnow blinked at it, then looked up. Too bad it'll, like, you know, die. Gar stood at Minnow for a bit, half listening to Tilly agreeing with them. You could press into the book. He said, nearly monotonously. It'll be dry, sure, man, it'll be flattened, but it'll be something that you can keep. Minnow looked down at the flower again, and then nodded. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I will do that. There was a smile slowly coming back to their face, and they seemed extremely happy. Best day ever, he heard them mutter. One. What? Minnow looked up at him. Gar stared at them for a moment. He didn't say anything. Wait, are you... Minnow squinted. Are you counting? I am now. You've never said it before. He looked at them. So, one. That's so fucking stupid. I'm going to cry. Minnow looked at them with a deep frown, but something in their expression was happy. He couldn't help but grin. Okay, okay. Hate to change the topic, but I'm actually kind of hungry. Minnow said after a moment. I don't have any... Till you want to say. Gar sighed. Pick a place you want to go. I'll buy. He hung his head in it with a slight sway. For eel? Minnow started giddy. Yeah. He lifted his head back up. Minnow looked excitedly at Tilly and gave her a wide smile and then looked back at Gar. He walked over to where he'd last left his guitar and went to pick it up as Minnow and Tilly talked about what they wanted to eat together. He slung it over his shoulder and reached up to adjust the flower behind his ear, making sure it stayed there. He took a deep breath before he turned back to face Minnow and Tilly. The day had gone smoothly. He took them to lunch and Tilly asked about one of Minnow's favorite games, prompting them to talk about it for nearly two hours straight, uninterrupted. Gar was happy to listen, even in the times where Minnow stumbled over some of the lore and had to backtrack a few times, making it slightly confusing to listen to. He understood it by the end, regardless. Tilly asked Minnow lots of questions about it, which made them happier than Gar thought he'd ever seen them. Tilly also went on a small ramble about color theory when Minnow brought flowers again. She mentioned something about a manipulative color, which spiraled into different conversations. Somehow their conversation got to discussing generic apocalypse films and what might happen if those events were to occur in reality. Then that went to discussing some obscure film artifact Gar never heard of that was apparently made by humans. Something about animatronics. Finally, they ended up going their separate ways. Gar did note, though, that both Tilly and Minnow gave him a funny look when they said goodbye, each in their own way. He wanted to ask what the expression meant, but it was getting late and he didn't want to keep them any longer. He decided to shrug it off by the time he got home. He unlocked the door, swinging it open and shutting it behind him, taking a moment to lean against it and take his tentacles down with a sigh. He closed his eye for a moment and took a deep breath. Then he was bombarded with hugs from both Hope and Whimsy, which immediately made him jump. He eventually leaned down to greet both of them, and they started to talk to him almost immediately as he shooed them into the living room. They seemed a bit more tired than they usually were. Auntie took us to walk by a river today, Whimsy was saying. That explained it. Oh, that's nice. He nodded his head. I got lots of pictures. I threatened to throw Whimsy in twice. Hope held up two fingers. Do not throw your sister in a river. I should not have to say that, he sighed. The key word was threatened. Hope gave a wide smile. He couldn't throw me in if he tried. He's a coward. Whimsy huffed. Am not. Hope swatted her. R2, you got scared when I started chasing you. You almost threw yourself into the river. Whimsy had a grin on her face. You two in throwing or chasing each other into rivers. He shook his head and took the guitar off his shoulders, walking towards his room to put it up. What do you do today? They both asked him at the same time, following him. A few things. Went to the park and played a few songs. Then ran around the town for a bit. Nothing special. He shrugged, though today did feel special, even if it wasn't anything too extravagant. You have a flower by your ear. 
Hope pointed at it. It's a marigold, Whimsy told Hope. Sis, a marigold is a flower. Hope looked at Whimsy with a wrinkled nose. I don't need to be specific. It's one flower. Just educating you. Whimsy gave Hope a smile that had a slightly sinister look to it. Gar watched the two for a moment before he reached up and took the flower from behind his ear, then walked back toward the living room with the two kids in tow. Where'd you get it? Hope asked. And why do you have it? Whimsy added. Tilly Minnow gave it to me as a gift, he told them, looking through a bookshelf by the TV. He pulled a heavier book about weather out, flipping to a random page and landing on something about a storm. What are you doing with it? Hope leaned over. He's pressing it, obviously, Whimsy said as if Hope asked a stupid question. How is it obvious? Hope shook his head quickly. Gar sighed, placing the flower between the pages of the book, then shut it. He listened to his kids continue to argue beside him as he slid the book back into its place. He'd come back to it later, though he had to get a frame first. He would deal with that later. Have you two eaten yet, or did your aunt just send you home? He interrupted with the two yelling at each other. We ate already, Whimsy nodded. Whimsy, shush, we could have gotten bonus food. Hope folded his arms. That would be lying, Hope. Whimsy tipped her head to the side and smiled. You are right, and lying is wrong, unless it has something to do with food, Hope huffed. Did she give you any dessert, then? Gar looked down at them. Okay, I'm honest when I say no. Hope turned with an odd look. He's not lying, Whimsy nodded. If you give me five minutes, I'll give you something for it, but you have to give me five minutes, he sighed. I am an honorable man. Five minutes for the promise of sweets. Hope bowed dramatically as Whimsy pulled on him to take him back toward the couch. Gar watched them both sit down and started talking quietly to each other. He went toward the kitchen and leaned against the counter for a moment with a sigh. It took a minute to enjoy the silence, trying not to think of anything in particular. He couldn't shake the weird feeling he got the way that Tilly and Mill looked at him, though he wondered if maybe he had just perceived it wrong. He still wondered what could have made them look that way. He guessed he should probably get used to strange looks everyone gave him, since it seemed to be becoming more common. He then realized it was nearing the end of the five minutes. He should probably get to holding up his end of the promise.